when soul companions should part ways despite their serendipity. Disruptive people and their disruptive activities. Welcome to Amaka Intellectual Factory, where I host podcasts and many other interesting stuff. Serendipity, an unplanned and pleasant encounter. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines serendipity as luck that takes the form of finding valuable or pleasant things that are not looked for. This should give you the idea of the electricity that takes place when two people who are soul companions find each other when they were not looking for each other. Too many things fall into place naturally and effortlessly. The affection is real. The passion is also real. A lot of times, they probably can't believe that they both exist because it feels like they are both out of each other's fantasies and daydreams. Yet, despite this serendipity, many soul companions face hurdles to their union. So when should soul companions part ways? When they are so out of alignment because of disruptive people and their disruptive activities that to force a union between themselves could be devastating, especially fatally devastating. The term soul companions, as coined by me, differs completely from the idea and concept of a soulmate. According to modern science, the universe is ever expanding, and this expansion is getting even faster as time passes by. In fact, the universe is expanding faster than the speed of light. Do you know what the speed of light is? Go to any electric light switch, turn it on and off for a few seconds. The time it takes to switch from on to off is what is called the speed of light. That's many times faster than a second. A quick Google search on the speed of light states, the speed of light in vacuum, commonly denoted, is a universal physical constant that is exactly equal to over 299 million meters per second. That's approximately 300,000 kilometers per second, 186,000 miles per second, 671 million miles per hour. That is how much faster the speed of light is to a second. Now pause. And remember what I just said about the universe a while ago. As fast as the speed of light is, the universe is moving way faster than the speed of light and keeps getting faster by the day. With this expansion comes an even greater endless or limitless possibilities. When our life experiences are not interfered by disruptive people and their disruptive activities, you begin to enjoy the fullness of the beauty of life and its endless serendipities. And part of those possibilities are endless and limitless opportunities to encounter soul companions we never planned to meet. These are soul companions no human matchmaker arranged for us to meet. Yet when we encounter them, they fit our deepest heart desires, even down to the most ordinary things. The encounter is so refreshing, it literally brings you even more to life. 
This is the handwork of Mother Nature. There is no greater matchmaker than Mother Nature. However, just as we have soul companions, that is, groups of people that are agreeable to us, we also have disruptive people who are groups of people that are disagreeable to us. Knowledge of this difference between agreeable and disagreeable people have been expressed in many forms. In the Bible, in the parable of the sower, the master says a separation of the wheat from the tars or chaff is necessary at the point of harvest. Now this is one deep conversation that would be a topic for another day. But I will say this quickly. To me, the point of harvest is the point of revelation. When we start to develop a sense of discernment of our match with agreeable people and our difference from disagreeable people. At that point, it is our responsibility and duty to self to gravitate to agreeable people and separate ourselves from disagreeable people. This same wisdom is found in military strategy books, like for instance, The Art of War by Sun Tzu, where Sun Tzu advises that we put ourselves in a position that makes it impossible for the enemy to defeat us. This is only possible through separation. Like I said earlier, the point of harvest is yet one of the many philosophical thoughts that will be discussed later. Back to soul companions. Because of disruptive people, and their disruptive activities, we are unable to experience the endless possibilities of serendipity with soul companions. We can't enjoy the splendor of our ever-expanding universe that so eagerly wants us to see how beautiful life is. Disruptive people have come with interferences hurdles, obstacles, and roadblocks, taking many forms like man-made religious beliefs, man-made laws, and man-made financial manipulation. These obstacles have made it nearly impossible for us to truly experience life and eventually achieve self-actualization. Self-actualization is impossible without first experiencing at least one instance of a serendipitous encounter with a soul companion. Many of us are unable to rise beyond financial obstacles, which keeps getting more punitive by the day. We have lived in the obstacles created by disruptive people and their disruptive ways for thousands of years. They have convinced us that that is the way of life. In fact, they have convinced us that that is the will of God. So how can I love you deeply, my dear soul companion, whom I encountered by chance with all these obstacles? You are my serendipity as I am yours. However, despite our serendipity and how much we match each other's fantasy, the reality is you are unavailable. As much as I hunger for you, your affection, and to love you wholeheartedly and end your melancholia or sadness, the fact remains, you are unavailable. We have to part ways. 
especially since I can't protect you from punitive actions that results from me trying to put a smile on your face. The thought of you suffering even the minutest pain because of me is very hard to bear. That is why for now, we have to part ways. This is not necessarily goodbye. Rather, it is moving with the tide of time. And who knows, maybe serendipity would be kind to the both of us again, with us being properly aligned with each other. That I don't know. What I do know is that every time I think of you, I will always think kindly of you. I can only hope that every time you think of me, you think kindly of me. Again, this isn't goodbye. Despite the hurdles, there might be chances to say hi or hello. Right now, my heart and mind are completely occupied with the thoughts of you. I will not fight it. I will bask in it until it passes like a seasonal flu or not. This doesn't mean I will lose affection for you in a week, a month, a year, or ever at all. It also doesn't mean I'm not doing anything about us. If I see an opening right now, sweetheart, I'm coming for you. I will rush right in with the rapidity of a hare. This is how I think you should handle the serendipity with a soul companion. When you find yourself out of alignment with that soul companion because of disruptive people and their disruptive activities. I hope this was understandable enough. I guess my concept of soul companions is something I would be touching on every now and then until I put it in a book. While we wait on that, please feel free to share your thoughts on what I have shared so far on my concept of soul companions. Please observe though that it is plural because it is an endless opportunity and not restricted to one person. Anyway, that's all I have to say for now. Until next time, take care of your lovely selves. And remember, life is beautiful and worth living. <laughs>